Greetings, culture warriors. This is Jeff Vieira, author of Culture is Everything, and your host for this Dispatch from the Front. And today, uh, again, hoping to continue a trend on some lighter uh, topics, um, more positive messaging. Uh, it's been a long, dreary few weeks. Uh, news has not been good in the United States of America, and that's definitely colored the news that we report on here. We take a look at news stories, particularly business news story, through the lens of culture. So in a few weeks here in the United States, we're going to be celebrating Independence Day, which is the top secular holiday in the United States of America. It's when we honor the signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. It was this document which marked the birth of the United States of America as a separate and distinct nation rather than what it had been previously, a colony of Great Britain. And the values which are enshrined in that document are what we celebrate on Independence Day. Uh, Independence Day isn't due for another few weeks as I record this. But I just felt like we could all use a reminder of what it's all about. And to do that, I want to talk a little bit about a core value that many Americans possess, but which has fallen into disfavor over the past generation or so. That value is patriotism. Patriotism. Oh, if you claim you're a patriot these days, they'll tell you you're a nationalist. You're a bigot. You're this, you're that. But what does it mean to be a patriot? Well, first and foremost, it means you love your country. Americans used to love their country so much that we were willing to die for it. More, more than that, we were willing to die for competing visions of that country, as happened during our great civil war, where two competing visions of the United States of America, which had existed in tension since well before the Declaration of Independence was signed, was resolved only through the most incredible bloodshed this nation has ever seen in its history. Terrible, terrible battles. Five long years of warfare. Devastated cities and farms and countryside. An entire lost generation of the flower of American manhood. All over a competing vision of what the country should be and what patriotism toward that nation would look like. Love of country. How can you love a country? Isn't that a vast abstraction? Don't you truly mean, well... I love my family. Well, I'm sorry, we can't say that because there has been a war on allegiance to the family throughout that same time period. How about I love my church? I love my fellow fill-in-the-blank here for whatever religious creed you subscribe to. We can't say that either because that's not an allowed affiliation in the eyes of our ruling class today. So you have no higher bond to the people who share your faith, which will protect you from anything. We can see that by the fact that I am a Catholic and I cannot attend Mass. 
Can't. Mass is an obligation. It's an obligation to God. Cannot go because you have to sign up because the state dictates how many people now can attend Mass. So the fact that I am a Catholic trying to honor my responsibility toward God doesn't matter to them. It's not considered a valid affiliation. It used to be. Not any longer. How about your affiliation to whatever racial subgroup you happen to belong to? Well, then provision will be made, at least in the current uh, scheme of things. That's considered to be valid. How about whatever bond there is with people who have the same sexual interests you do, whatever that is? Oh, well, that's okay. That's fine. Even at the height of pandemic, for example, Mr. Fauci made an exception for the quarantine if you wanted to hook up through Tinder with someone for sex. So if that's your thing, hey, the coronavirus doesn't have any impact on that. No problem. Do what you will. But if you sit closer than 10 feet from somebody in a pew worshiping God, that's strictly verboten. So those kind of affiliations are still allowed. Chiefly because there is as yet no conflict between people holding those affiliations and the ruling class. I guarantee you, as soon as there is, those affiliations will no longer be seen as valid either. How about professional affiliations? You know, are bankers allowed to bond together? No. No, a group of bankers is a conspiracy. How about politicians? Well, that's fine. Political parties... You know, your affiliation there trumps everything else because for the left in this country, political affiliation is what replaced religion. So that is a lot. Again, presuming you have the right political affiliation, if you have the wrong one, you're not allowed to speak of it. It's the secret which must be kept. You're a closeted non-democrat. How about if you're a veteran? Not many Americans are these days. It's less than 1% of the population. These are people who swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. How about them? Nah. That doesn't count either. Because if you're considering yourself a veteran, you get a little bit too close to the ideal of patriotism. The notion that the country is worth sacrifice even up to your very life. That's strictly verboten. Because there's a value that the ruling class holds which trumps patriotism, the love of your country. And that is globalism. Does that mean you love the entire earth? You love North Korea? You love the Tibetan plateau? How does that work exactly? Well, it doesn't. Globalism is actually a fig leaf for support for the aristocracy that runs so many nations around the globe. This aristocracy, who attend fancy international conferences several times a year to coordinate, when they you see, when they do it, it's not a conspiracy, it's coordinating, what policy shall be, and who gets to make policy. Even though these people don't represent their nations at all. 
they're by and large not political leaders at all. They haven't won election to anything. So they do not represent their people. They are simply a self-anointed elite who get together to decide things. And through rigid control, and in many cases a blackmail regime, they bond together and push the world in the same direction. Their direction. Whatever suits them. So that is the, quote, higher principle than patriotism that we are asked to embrace. We are citizens of the world! And I imagine that that would be the case until there was an alien invasion. And then, as in the famous Simpsons episode, these same people would suddenly decide, I, for one, welcome our new alien masters. Because that's just how they are. But for those of us who love our country, for those of us who love America, what do we love about it? Do we see America as being above criticism? Clearly not. You'd have had to listen to a lot less of me blathering were that the case. Do we think that America should remain static and never change? No. There are things that I would change about this country in a heartbeat any day of the week. I'll give you a list. Radical changes in some cases. But what we love about America, what makes America utterly unique in human history, the shining city on the hill, as the quote goes. What makes America, America, and utterly irreplaceable in the scheme of history is that America is about liberty. Plain and simple. What is liberty? Liberty is the freedom To enjoy your life, your property, to pursue happiness as you see fit without having to ask permission. Live the life you seek to live, yourself, your family. No mother may I to some unelected government bureaucrat who thinks they know better than you do. No asking big brother. You live your life on your terms. That's what America's always been about. Ah, but America has slavery. Yes, we did. Slavery was the founding sin of the United States of America. And America was also one of the first nations to abolish slavery at great cost. How many of you know, I suspect very few, given it's not in the interest of the current ruling class that you know, how many of you know how many black senators there were in the first Senate convened after the end of the Civil War? Pretty big deal, right? Because there's only two senators per state. So in order for there to be any African-American senators, that means there had to be an awful lot of people voting for them right after the Civil War. Now, the truth was that there were some people who, because of the Civil War, were not allowed to vote. They had to be rehabilitated first. But still, when you Google it, or I recommend Bing or DuckDuckGo rather than Google, when you look it up, I think you'll be surprised. And I think what will surprise you more is why we haven't heard more about these men. And they were all men. 
and ask yourself how a country can go in the space of so short a time from enslaving a people based on race to having them in the highest echelons of power that existed within the country. It's incredible. And then kindly tell me where else has that happened in human history? Where else has that happened? And that'll give you an idea of why patriots love the United States of America. You see, the Civil War was ultimately an argument. It was an argument over what liberty meant and who counted as a citizen. And we settled that argument on the battlefield decisively. And once that argument was settled, it was enshrined in our Constitution. Now, the one mistake we did make was in not dealing with the party of traitors who forwarded the other argument. That party was allowed to continue. And by the 20s, so about a generation later, as people forgot about how painful the war was, by the 20s, you started to see the rise of the Ku Klux Klan and Jim Crow, both features of that same party which supported slavery. But then we fought that, this time in a more peaceful fashion. And of course, by another generation, that was put to bed. And again, I think you'll look pretty much in vain for examples of where a country has gone, undergone such a transformation as has happened in the United States of America. Again, over a matter of principle, of the notion that equal justice under the law matters. It's a bulwark of liberty. That liberty these days is under assault. And it's got the usual suspects. The ruling class, they're globalists. They want no notion that America is unique. No notion that America is special. They want America torn down. Because liberty is a threat to their power and influence. To do this, they don't try to make everyone a globalist. It's too abstract. It's enough that the people calling the shots are globalists. What they do instead is they try to make everybody more tribal so that they you to a lower level affiliation than that of American. You know, when I was in the military and we went through training as to how to resist interrogation if captured by the enemy. One of the passages that we had to memorize in our code of contact, conduct went like this. I am an American fighting for freedom, responsible for my actions, and dedicated to the principles which made my country free. We all had to memorize it. Obviously, these many years since, I still remember it. Because it was special. Because it means something. There are very few people overall on the face of the earth who can say they are Americans. 
But guess what? Even if you weren't born here, as long as you hold the values enshrined in the Declaration of Independence and in our Constitution, as long as you, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, are an American, then you are my brother. You are my sister. You are an American. That's what makes this country unique, and that's what engenders the fervid patriotism that sets this nation apart from all others on the face of the earth. Thank you and have a great day. 